Members of the All Progressives Congress Professional Forum have endorsed the democratic and transparent process that produced Ahmed Bola Tinubu as the party's candidate for the 2023 presidential election. The forum, which comprised technocrats, intellectuals and professionals within the governing party, is also commending President Muhammad Buhari for his leadership, especially his non-interference in the presidential primary election. We congratulate Asiwaji Bola Tinubu as our presidential flag bearer and his good word gesture towards his uh, other contestants at the convention. C. The forum pledges our 100% support and commitment to massively mobilize for our candidate in the run-up to the 223 presidential election. <laughs> D. We urge our flag bearer to prioritize the roles and inclusion of professionals in his campaign. E. The forum urges the party leadership to use the success of the primaries as a turning point to re-engineer APC as an ideological one, not just a platform to win elections. F. The forum will continue its flagship program APC scorecard with political office holders as a means of showcasing our achievements as a governing party as we head towards the general election. Now let's bring in Nkemo KK, Acting Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the APC's Professional Forum. Thank you so much for joining us on the news, Nkemo. Thank you very much for having me. Amazing. I mean, taking a look at um, or listening to your statement there, you are clearly pleased um, with the process that played out at the APC um, convention. But then again, was it really a seamless process? We do know that all sorts of drama played out behind um, the scene. What we just saw was mm -hmm. the tail end um, of a soap opera. Mm -hmm. But what do you make of the behind? I mean, from what played out behind the scenes, would you say all is well within the party? Absolutely, all is well. Um, of course, you can't organize such an event without expecting some hiccups. They are expected. I mean, when the question is, what was the end result? And how the other opponents that contested, how did they feel? Did they feel cheated? Did they feel like they were part of the system? And they all felt everything went well. And the best candidate, you know, won. Well, I don't think that the governors, some governors of your party will agree with you that all is well. Uh, barely 20, 48 hours to that convention, uh, the national chairman of your party single-handedly named a candidate and even used the president's name to say the president was in the know of it. And the person of the president of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, as the consensus candidate of your party. And there are reports that the governors are pissed they are not pleased with the national chairman and they may uh, be calling for him to be removed. So can you clearly say that all is well even all is, after the convention? All is well. Let me tell you, um, when you have an association of human beings, you expect people to be on different sides. The question is what happens at the end. Mm -hmm. Of course, the president you know, stayed away from the process. Um, yes, we all know what uh, transpired between the chairman about naming a... Uh, Lawana is a consensus candidate, but did he come out the winner? He didn't. The process went ahead and the uh, Asawaji Bola Tinubu emerged as the candidate. Mm. Uh, it's, it's, it's That's all. a very interesting point you, you, know, you did mention, but then let's, let's take a look at this. Yes. Um, are you saying that the statement by the national chairman would not have given us a different narrative in terms of this narrative of everything happening smoothly? And just as she has mentioned with the calls, right now of him, you know, asking for him to step aside, basically. People are actually fearing that he might be doing the same thing the former chairman did as well. Let's talk about, you know, what's playing out right now at the party. What is the theme, or rather, what's the pulse at the party? We're going to feel the pulse of the APC right now. From, from what I know, yes. I mean, I haven't heard anybody calling for the uh, removal of the chairman okay. or for him to resign. Okay. I haven't heard that. Okay. Of course, this may not be the right time to do that. Okay. This is a time for reconciliation, trying to bring, bring everybody together, those that contested, make sure they are happy, uh, and just sit down and, and find a way to campaign for the next eight months okay. so that we would you know, go ahead and win the election when the time comes. Now, we're talking about a strong power shift. So let's just, you know, moving away from that point. We saw a very strong power shift, let me put it that way, in the party. The emergence of the power block called the governors, mm -hmm. and that's a better way um, to put it, yes, and the roles um, that they played, being that these delegates actually come from states mm -hmm. that these governors govern in the first place. Talk us through the role of the governors in this whole convention and how powerful they have become. Should we be worried? No, there's no need to be worried. That's uh, the way the system is right now. The governors seem to have a, 
a lot of influence in what happens in a party. It's, it's normal. Uh, you know, I always look at... Um, Could that be what caused the president to withhold the statement of his preferred no, candidate? No, 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 I doubt place? it. I'm not quite sure. I, I didn't hear the uh, president make that statement. All we heard was the chairman said... We didn't, I didn't hear the chairman even make the statement. Apparently he spoke to the uh, National Working you know, Committee uh, members. But the point is, I look at voters as grassroots. They're like sheep, and every sheep has a shepherd. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that when you go to every state, there are people that decide or talk to the voters, and the voters don't listen to them. And that's the way it works. If it's the governors at this time, so be it. That's what's you know, transpiring. That's what's happening. And the governors seem to have a, a lot of uh, you know, power being in charge of the states. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you, I mean, you're from a body of professionals. Yes. Uh, speaking about professionalism, mm -hmm. when you look at the APC as a party, uh, the idea, the notion that the chairman can single-handedly name a candidate ahead of an elective primary, which the party has decided, what does that say about the governance structure? And it's not just that. We have members of the National Working Committee who are complaining of not being paid. They're not even sure how many they are. It sounds very familiar uh, to what we saw in the previous leadership of the party. So history seems to be repeating itself here with governance issue, with leadership issue when it comes to the APC. And you say all is well? I, I, seriously, I haven't heard all this is you're talking about. Mm. I haven't heard about you know, National Working Committee members not being paid. Mm. There's no reason for that. There's money in the coffers, so they should be paid. After you sold your forms for 100 million for the presidential, <laughs> so you haven't got the money. <laughs> was like news to me also yeah, when I heard yeah. it. So um, I'm surprised that they haven't been paid. But uh, when, when, when one man is supreme to a party, what does that he's say? He's not supreme. But he named a, a candidate. So it what didn't happened? work out. You is talk it? about the end, but uh, does the process justify that end? I mean, the point is. Um, let me give an example. Um, look at when Trump tried to do what he wanted to do in the United States and the system stopped him. Mm -hmm. That's what happened here. If the chairman actually named and said that Lawan was going to be the uh, consensus candidate and it didn't work, yeah, that's, that's fine. It happens. You make a statement, you take a risk, and if it doesn't fly, the system will checkmate you. And that's what happened. It's, the system checkmated the process and allowed it to to, to, to go on. Talking about things running smoothly, are things running smoothly at the Secretariat right now? We just talk about the fact that NWC members have not been paid. We hear as, directors have been asked to step I know, aside. As far as I know, I believe things are running smoothly. Um, like I said... You believe any, or do you any, want to confirm this? I am not a member. I'm not an executive member, of the, so I don't work there. So I don't know what's going on. But I'm telling you, of course, you listen to the grapevine and see if there's anything going on. Yeah. I haven't heard anything. But any smart politician will know that the best thing to do right now is to reconcile agreed members, try and put the party together because we're going for the election. We have eight months to you know, tell the voters this is what APC stands for, mm -hmm. this is what we intend to do. Okay. We're trying to move forward, move this, the country forward to a better place. That's all. And, and as a professional group, what sort of influence do you wield? I'd like to know that. But let's also talk about your candidate because you're very pleased as a buddy that he emerged. Uh, a lot of questions have been asked. Asked. I mean, he, is it the winning candidate? Was it the best your party could do? And for the running mate, how worried are you as a buddy and as a person, a member of the APC, uh, about the growing resentment to a Muslim Muslim ticket? You know, uh, let me first talk about the candidate. Um, the democratic process says you do primaries mm -hmm. and hopefully somebody emerges. Mm -hmm. Somebody has emerged, mm -hmm. and that's Asiwaji. Yeah. Now, if you talk about him being the best or the winning candidate, next year we'll tell. All we need to do as a party is stay focused, put him out there, let the voters assess him, of course, from what he's talking about, what he plans to do for the nation, and then decide. Decide whether he's the best candidate to, to rule the country or not, or any other party. But well, we believe that we have somebody that's credible. The issue of a um, uh, Muslim Muslim ticket is it's him. It's a candidate for him to decide who he wants to pick. Of course, Not for the party? Um, he can consult. He is the one that was at him. The question is this. When you do elections, you're not there to be this, play second fiddle. Mm -hmm. It's not a sporting event where you're, there's a prize to get if you come second. You either you win or you lose. So what do you do? You look for uh, a partner that would help you win an election. Mm -hmm. 
you look for a partner that's competent enough that if anything happens to you, that person will be able to take over and run their affairs. Regardless of the, of the religion, is that what you're saying? Oh no, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I'm not saying that because it could also be the religion could also play a factor. Mm -hmm. The point I'm saying is that you are in this business to win. You're not there to play second field. You want to win, so you do your numbers. You do so your clearly, and it's a decision of the candidate himself, of the candidate not, himself the not the party. Not the party. The candidate the because he needs to also find somebody that he can have partner have okay. good chemistry with. Okay. You know, that's very important. He needs to find somebody he can work with so there's no rancor, that somebody that's, you know, obedient to him and does his bidding. Mm -hmm. you know, that's it. Interesting. Interesting point you've actually raised. Well, thank you so much yes. for joining us on the news tonight and, yes. of course, making out that point. Um, we've been talking to Nkemo Keke, acting chairman of the Board of Trustees of the APC's Professional Forum.